The Lord decides shepherd I shall not want him make an eye lie down in a green pasture him lead I beside still water them him restored I soul him lead it I in the part of righteousness for him name sake yay though I rasta I go walk through the valley of the shadow of death I can't fear no evil for thy rod and I stab them comforted I and I who prepared a table before I in the presence of our enemy them who anointed I head with no oil me cup run it over surely goodness and mercy I go follow I all the days of I Ivan me I go dwell in the house of the Lord God ja, where two centuries meet in the name of the most I ja, at the soja ja, de. If Jaja never watch upon your house, the white man, I go watch it in vain. Same way, if Jaja never build up your house, the builder, I go build it in vain. The name of the Lord is a strong tower, and the righteous run into it and they may He that dwelleth in the secret place of the most I Jah shall therein abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Kadamawe, Grumabe, Ate, Lae, Igzag Beer, Tanayistalin, Abba Shante, 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 Shante. Kadamawe, Grumabe, Ate, Lae. This is the Blackboard, aka Kuku Shonamo, where we speak truth to power. In every traditional African home, there is a Blackboard, and each time this Blackboard rests on the fire, there is something sumptuous cooking. Today, we have all the sumptuousness that you need. Your wildest delicacies are going to be served you. This is where we speak truth to power. We normally would not criticize, but if we must criticize, we would only just criticize to build and not to destroy. That is why we say we are in the service of God and country. It's all about our people, our continent, our land. This is the black pot. And remember, in every traditional African home, there is a black pot. And you cannot overemphasize the importance of this black pot. It represents nutrition. And it represents togetherness and unity. Each time this pot rests on the fire, we know that we have to gather around. So we'll be able to enjoy the sumptuousness from this. Get ready to be saved. We are live on Pan-African TV. Ghana's only Pan-African TV. Africa's number one. And of course, my name, Black Rasta. Of course, we are the champions of Pan-Africanism on TV. This is the Black Pot. And my name, Black Rasta. We are also live on Loud Silence TV. Loud on Black Empire TV. And loud on Ghana Web TV. So we are all over the continent of Africa and beyond. This is the Black Pot. Now today, I want to entitle the whole Kabudo, the whole show, the Epistles of Aisha Wang. If you want... You can call it the Epistles of Aisha Hwang or Epistles of Huang In. But we will entitle the whole Kabudo, the Epistles of Aisha Huang. Now, number one, Epistles of Aisha Huang, chapter one, verse one, says what? Aisha Huang entered Ghana through approved route. This is Aisha Huang. 47-year-old Aisha Huang, born in 1975. That is if it is true at all, because there's another record that says she was born in 1986. She is the queen of Galamse, illegal mining. She has power to turn the political system in Ghana around and make a cartoon character out of it. This is the woman. She was deported back to China. She found her way back into the country in just a matter of hours. My brother, my sister, we have proof. We're going to show you a lot of things today. And I need you to come along. Now, first on the agenda is how Aisha Huang entered the country. Many were those who said she got a visa to Togo. And from Togo, she was able to sneak into the country through one of our poorest borders. She was even able to get a Ghana card. She renewed it a number of times in her last attempt. In fact, 
she raised eyebrows. Authorities were told, but the dump authorities were not able to put their finger on it and still allowed an illegal alien, illegal spy, illegal gangster into this country without knowing exactly what they were doing. We will tell you more, but watch this. And this is from Ghana Web. What is he saying? Aisha Wang entered Ghana with forged documents through an official route. Listen, official route. Did she come through the airport? Did she come through our numerous land borders? How did she enter? Let's read. We are aware that when she entered into the country, our security forces followed to be sure that she is the right person. And you are aware uh, how a lot of aliens look alike. Asians look alike. It took us uh, a bit of time to be sure she was the same person that was deported. He added. I don't have the date, but I am aware that she has been here just a few weeks. Underline that. Just a few weeks. She used different forged documents to acquire the Ghana card. He said in response to when exactly she may have arrived in the country. My brother, my sister, but who is this person speaking? Who is this man? That's, that's him. And what is the headline? Come along. Look at the headline. When was this published? Look at the date. 8th September 2022. Government spokesperson on security and governance. And that is his name there. My brother, my sister, Bwachi Dankwa. That's him. Who is he? Government spokesperson on security and governance. So this is the government's mouthpiece when it comes to governance and security. This is him, Bwachi Dankwa. Go back to the story. What is he saying? Now come to the second paragraph. I don't have the date, but I am aware that she has been here just a few weeks. She used different forged documents to acquire the Ghana card. He said in response to when exactly she may have arrived in the country. Now here he says just a few weeks. Just a few weeks. Now when you read the first paragraph, what is he saying? He says, Asians all look alike, right? Right? Which is true. Asians do look alike. They all look the same to us. My brother, my sister, yes. But the big question is, has she truly been in the country for just a few weeks? Who followed her? How did they get to know that this was the person of interest? Did they not use fingerprints? Don't we use fingerprints anymore in this country? We only look at face like primitive people in 2 BC. Now it's all about the face, right? So when you have a disfigured face, you can enter the country and everything is cool. This is what the head of security, my brother, my sister, government spokesperson on security and governance. He's saying that they were looking at the face and they realized that all Asians look alike. So as Asians looking alike, they would have to follow them and find out exactly if this is the person of interest. What happened to fingerprints? Fingerprints are unique. It doesn't matter how much you disfigure your face. Your fingerprints would expose you. We still haven't reached that age yet. We are still following people with microscopes. To look at their eyes. And see if they are the people of interest. That we have been following all this while. My brother my sister. It says just a few weeks. But those on the ground. Working with Aisha Wang in Ghana on the illegal galamse or illegal mining fields. What are they saying? What are they saying? Look at the headlines. They are saying that she has been in the country for how many years? Watch. Aisha Wang has been in Ghana for past two years. Small scale miners association allege. Give me that story. Watch what the story says. He says his comment comes on the back of the re-arrest of Aisha Huanga, who has been arraigned for fresh charges after sneaking into the country five years after she was deported. Aisha Huanga has been charged together with three others for engaging in sales and purchases of minerals without a license. That's what the man is saying. This is the man. What is his name? Mr. Prempe. 
my brother. And she has been moving from one reserve to the other, doing her illegal mining for the past two years. Spokesperson on security and governance is just a few weeks. You see how porous and silly some of our if officials can be? This is the government spokesperson. My brother, my sister, on security, not on agriculture. No. Government spokesperson on security and governance. She's been in the country for just a few weeks. The people she's been working with on the ground say two solid years. And probably when they tried to make noise, she flashed a Ghana card and told them that, hey, watch, I have the Ghana card. I have been allowed into the country legally. What would they say? Especially that our country is full of illiteracy. My brother, my sister, we are in trouble. How many more unwanted persona non gratas do we have in this country? How many more personas non grata do we have in this country lurking in the shadows in the name of a Ghana card? Yet, about 50% of Ghanaians who are qualified to have a Ghana card still don't have it. Watch what is happening to our country. Deported five years ago, found herself back into the country for at least the past two years she's been in this country tormenting the people of this nation. Remember, we're told that she allegedly shot and killed a number of Ghanaians on the field. Nothing happened. She's well connected. She had the power to even ask for the deportation of other Chinese citizens who misbehaved and crossed her paths. If you cross her line, she would get the officials to deport you while she herself stayed here. More powerful even than the Chinese ambassador to Ghana. My brother, my sister, the epistles of Aisha Huang. Aisha Huang has been in the country for over two years now. The security of this country says only a few weeks. This tells us that we are in trouble. We are in trouble. How many people agree that we are in trouble? How many people understand the porosity of our bodies? And I'm going to be talking more. Today we are talking about the epistles of Aisha Huang. This is chapter 1, verse 1. Come along. Yes, right now we're going straight up to Epistles of Aisha Huang, chapter 1, verse 2. And what is it saying? Chapter 1, verse 2 says, Chinese spies sent to destroy Ghana Koko. Now, how many of us understand this? And how many of us, my brother, my sister, remember that upon Krumah, the Minister of Information, came out just some months back and told us that some money had come in from the EU to support Ghana Koko. Every year we got loans coming in from countries that have nothing. Countries that have nothing at all are coming to give loans to a country that is so blessed with almost everything. You can walk out in Ghana and spit anywhere and it will grow. Your spit is enough to cause growth. That's how blessed we are, yet we are so accursed. So much money coming into this country in terms of loans. Upon Krumah, information minister told us about it, that money was coming from the EU to support Ghana Kuku, purportedly. Right? At the end of the day, what happened? We heard that Chinese galamsayers were moving from one cocoa farm to the other, buying the cocoa farms and turning them into mining sites, illegal mining sites, galamsay sites. And then the EU got angry. We gave you so much money to push into your cocoa industry. Now your cocoa is so polluted. All the bees are getting bad. Everything is spoiled. Why? You have replaced nice cocoa farms with galamsey sites. Why? Then boom, China came out all of a sudden and said, oh, in fact, the Ghana cocoa, we have the same thing in China. We have been able to grow some in Ghana so you can import the cocoa from us. Because the EU had refused to import and patronize Ghana cocoa because of the pollution that came through Galamse. Galamse that was started on a large scale with the entry of the Chinese. Do you see it? Do you see it? Now there is something coming up and it says Chinese spy sent to destroy Ghana Koko. 
What is the headline? Watch the headline. Aisha Wang is a Chinese state spy sent to destroy cocoa sector. Did I say that? Did I say that? And who is saying that? Professor Enning. Who is Professor Enning? This is a gentleman I like. He's Thomas a little bit, just like me. Very wonderful gentleman. And when he speaks, he speaks his mind. If you go to the Kofi Annan Training Center, you will find him there. He is the director. What is the story saying? My brother, my sister, you will puke. Come along. Come along. Let's read it. Watch this. In a September 7 interview with Accra based Joy FM, Professor Enin uh, anchored his uh, argument on the reasons given by the state for the deportation of the Chinese national in 2018 when she was arrested for illegal mining activities, otherwise known as Galamse. According to him, Asha Huang was no ordinary person if the influence she wielded would affect the sino high loan the country was seeking from China at the time of her deportation. He believes that Galamse Kingpin is engaging in Galamse activities to pollute the country's water bodies, which will eventually affect cocoa crops. There's a massive institutionalized trafficking scheme enabled by high-level corruption and collusion. And we find this in Galamse. In the Rosewood criminal enterprise, the Chinese merchant involved or the state agent involved is Huang Yanchen, also known as Helena Huang. Dash it away. Dash it away. Hear me. Now you see what the link is. Asha Huang comes in. She starts massive galamse. Imports other Chinese into the country to help destroy the environment. And when they make Ghana cocoa very, very unpalatable and unattractive, the EU comes in and says, oh, you have destroyed your cocoa. We are not interested in it. We've given you so much money. We don't need your cocoa anymore. You've wasted the money that we gave you as loans. For this reason, we are done with you. China comes out all of a sudden. Oh, the cocoa from Ghana, we have the same thing here. We have been planting it for some time now. It's the same thing. Ours is not polluted. And EU says, okay, we would like to try the Ghana Chinese cocoa. My brother, my sister, if this is not a spy, a gangster, a gangsterly spy, then who is Aisha Huang? Remember I told you this a few days ago, that this woman is not an ordinary Chinese citizen. If the whole country decided not to prosecute Aisha Huang, a.k.a. Huang Yi, and sent her back to China on a first class flight, fed her 14 times before she arrived in Guangzhou, massaged her while still sitting in the business class, all the way back to Guangzhou. And when she arrived, they put her in a palanquin, Galamse Queen's palanquin, to herald her arrival in Guangzhou because she had achieved what the Chinese government had sent her to come and do. And the Chinese government said, they will give us a loan for Sino Hydro. And our dumb senior minister at that time, now senior advisor to the president's useless office, told the whole world that there was no need to prosecute Aisha Huang after all, it will not improve the economy. But in exchange, there was going to be a Chinese loan, not a gift, loan to be paid by not these dead working people like Nana Kufu Ado and uh, uh, Osafu Mafu, the dumb pig headed senior minister, now turned senior advisor. They will not pay, they will be dead long before these loans even start being serviced. Now, from the information I have, less than 30% of the loan has been given five years after whatever happened. My brother, my sister, now China is producing. Ghana cocoa and luring the EU to come and take it after sending Asha Huang to come and destroy our cocoa. And with the aid of our stupid indigents, they push her into areas and chiefs are supporting her and she's been able to ransack the whole Galamse trade and turn it upside down 
in her interest and the interest of China. Is China a friend or an enemy? When she left, they brought in Helena Huang, whose real name is Huang Chengyang. How are they getting these names? Somebody's called Huang Yang. All of a sudden, she's Aisha Huang. Somebody's Huang Chengyang. Helena Huang. Why? My brother, my sister, these are not ordinary Chinese citizens. They are gangsterly spies unleashed on the people of this country to demoralize us, ransack us, invade us economically, and make us dependent on them forever and ever. It's what Nkrumah would call neocolonialism. They say slavery is gone, colonialism is gone. This is neocolonialism. So, Asha Wang is a gangsterly spy, not an ordinary citizen. And we knew that from a long time. We are still on the epistles of Aisha Huang, step by step. When we return, we're going to be looking at the epistles of Aisha Huang, chapter 1, verse 3. In the interim, this is the black pot, a.k.a. Kukushonomo, where we speak truth to power. I have a quote for you. Well, This is the Black Pot, a.k.a. Kukushonomo, where we speak truth to power. Follow me. That the life of a spy is like a writer will not live with the main population, but through bribes, blackmail, and other such things, they get into the very fiber of their activities. They are like termites that eat the wooden framework the foundational framework of institutions and nations. This is the black pot, a.k.a. Kukushunumu, where we speak truth to power. Now, the truth is an orphan. It stands alone. The truth has no father, no mother. Fortunately, you can be a brother of the truth, a sister of the truth. Support this show. Pick our numbers off the screens. Let us be that uh, solid lifeline to your staggering business line. We love it when African businesses prosper. Because the more you prosper, the more we become independent as a continent and as a people. The more you become independent, the more we are able to get respect. Yes, that's what it is. We have lost our respect because we are always going for loans and begging. Anywhere they see us, it's like it's written on our foreheads. Beggars are coming. My brother, my sister. Do business with us. Pick our numbers off the screen. Send us a WhatsApp call or WhatsApp message. Tell us what business you're doing and what we can do together to be able to make your business stand. Via satellite, we are seen all over the continent of Africa and beyond. Via the almighty Pan-African TV. Yes, we are the leaders of Pan-Africanism on TV. Remember that. And my name, Black Rasta. To all our sponsors, I want to say thank you. We appreciate you. We love you. We love you. And remember, you are not just supporting a show, you are supporting the next generation. The biggest problem we have in Africa is not roads and electricity. It is, we need to rewire the minds of our generations. And when the minds are rewired, the brains are rewired, we are done. My brother, my sister, this is the Black Pot, a.k.a. Kukushonomo, where we speak truth to power. The epistles of Aisha Huang. Chapter 1, verse 3, says what? Watch it. Aisha Huang, Chinese gangster, 
spy with deadly political weapon. Eh? So this is her. In fact, they are talking about her now more than even the dirty cathedral. They are talking about Asha Wang more than even Akosia Broni, Sewa Broni, or is it Mansa Broni? The prostitute who was on the president's plane and taking selfies with the president took pictures of the president naked on the bed and gave it to us, allegedly. My brother, my sister, she has a deadly political weapon. We have said it on this show time and again. But what is that political weapon that is so deadly? Watch it. Aisha Huang, Chinese women, blackmailing top officials with sex tip. Kweku Bakun's 2017 comment pops up. Thanks to Kweku Bakun, this man has all the documents. He has all the documents in the world. Whenever you see him walking around, he's a documentary in himself. I love him. I appreciate him. Now, when this man dies, the biggest thing that his children would inherit would not be the houses he has built or the cars he has, but the documents that he has been able to invest in. I salute you, senior colleague. Some people see him to be skewed a little bit towards the NPP, even though his father was a stalwart of the CPP, Nkrumah's party. We see him as a positive soul, because in the past, he has supported positivity, and for a reason, he's quite knowledgeable. I would not disrespect him, never ever would I. Whatever he says, most of these I take very seriously. And this is what he says, that Aisha Wang has sex tapes of top gurus, top goons, my brother, my sister, in power. This is Kweku Bakun. Now he calls himself Abdul Malik Kweku Bakun, have been converted to Islam. My brother, my sister, Abdul Malik Kwekubaku, editor in chief of the Crusading Guide. That's what he says. Read this. Come along. Come, come, follow me. Hear me now. Watch. The veteran journalist who was contributing to a panel discussion on News File, a Joy News uh, program, a Joy News program, in May 2017, opined that Aisha Huang and her other Chinese cohorts have created a network which has made them powerful and untouchable in Ghana. According to him, the Chinese nationals have managed to place their agents in key positions in the country, particularly security agencies. He mentioned that Aisha Huang and her other Chinese women have established connections with persons across the political divide and have uh, employed the use of blackmail to get out of trouble. Wekubakun was commenting on the arrest of four Chinese workers by officers of the immigration service on a Galamse concession. Ah, 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 ah. At Bipotinting in the Amansier Central District. Oh, you are. She got her agents placed in state institutions particularly the security agencies, and she's able to wriggle herself out of danger or trouble any time she's touched. I hope it doesn't happen this time round, he said. The veteran journalist added that the Chinese nationals were not engaged in Galamse activities when they came to the country, but gradually began drifting towards that sector. He said they have since been using recordings obtained from their sexual escapades with top officials to keep the officials under their thumb. Part of their strength is that they built up a certain system of blackmailing. They are women. So I am not going to use certain words and I am not going to say certain things as to when they came into town, what they began to do, who were they and were they, uh, 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 whether they have something to do with Galamse or not. That's it that way. All right. All right. All right. All right. So hear me now. My, my brother, Kweku Baku is speaking. That's it that way. And he's saying that they have connections. They have done a lot. Come along. They have done a lot in this country. Other Chinese women, prostitutes coming in and filming themselves having sex with top political goons and gurus. Whenever they want to talk, they squeeze their balls with the tape and they keep quiet. Who are these political goons? Does it involve the president?
if Sewa Bruni can be patronized by the president, as has been alleged, he can as well patronize Chinese prostitutes, which is, which is a shame if it is true. I don't even want to think about it. Why is it that un un ah. honorable people in honorable positions will stoop so low, flounder libidos just anywhere? Do you know what you are eating? A Ghanaian who loves Chinese food. Do you know what you are eating? Are you sure? What you are seeing is what it is. Now they have recorded you. They are using it against you. If it was against you alone, no problem. But it is affecting the whole nation. Children yet to be born. The children who are yet to be born, there are children who are yet unborn too. Will come and meet the canker that you have created. My brother, my sister. But this is not why I decided to look at Aisha. Wang, chapter 1, verse 3. Three. Why I decided to look at it is the fact that when you read that story further, it says that Aisha Wang did not only start in the NPP government. She was also there in the days of Mahama. And she had the same power in the days of Mahama. She still had the same blackmailing tapes. Like a spy, a writer, would only go through the population and get information rather than staying within the population. Anytime she wanted information, she knew what to do. She would use the big wigs, blackmail them, squeeze them hard, and get the information and relate it to her paymasters. My brother, my sister, what is happening? Is she truly a Chinese spy? As for gangster, it has been confirmed to be deported and find yourself back in Ghana. And stupid security authorities are saying that, oh, they were looking at the face. But the faces all looked alike, like Chinese and Asian faces. So they were following them like Akamu to be, following them to see, hey, this person said Aisha Wang, she likes to eat, uh, what's that thing, gobe. So let's see if she will eat gobe tomorrow. Tomorrow morning, they are lurking around. Is she eating gobe? Oh, she's not eating it yet. Oh. Hey, hey, Charlie, hey, 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 she has bought gobe. She's going to eat gobe. This might be Aisha Wang. What primitive security system is that? Primitive. In some countries, as you are even approaching the immigration, they have read what you have eaten in your stomach. Your intestines are already saying that, ah, this guy ate to Ozafi in Ghana, Accra, at 11.30 a.m. before he boarded the flight. You are still looking at faces. Ish. Hey. Say it after me. Hey. Hey. So with all the noise your vice president is making, digitalization, digitalization, we are going to digitalize the whole place. The Ghana card is better than one million flyovers. Your Ghana card has now been turned into a toilet paper by Aisha Wang. What a shameless group of people. You are still looking at faces. You follow Aisha Wang to see if what they said she was eating, she's still eating that. Before you know it's Aisha Wang. Oh, hallelujah. Al-Qaeda, we thank you so much for the patience you have for us. Al-Shabaab, Boko Haram, we know that if you want to finish us, you finish us. But we take God's name, Beguna. This country's security is useless. We know say now you know one come attack attack we. If Boko Haram like tomorrow, all Ghana or Morgana don't finish, don't die finish. We take God name Beguna. Wallahi Allah Talahi. When we return, I will move away from the epistles of Aisha Wang and delve into other things that will shock you that will shake your bodily framework like an earthquake no tsunami we shall return hey 
Wayo! My name is Waris. All of you know me as Comedian Waris. I come from a home where cleanliness is not only next to godliness, but a must. We seldom fell ill and we saved our doctor this headache. At an early age, my mother introduced us to our best gift ever, PJ's Acid Cleaner. PJ's Acid Cleaner kills 99% of all gems and keeps your WCs, marbles, tiles, and concrete floors sparkling new and clean. In fact, you don't need any extra muscle when it comes to PJ's Acid Cleaner. It has all the muscle. When my fiancé, Mamiya, first visited me, I almost lost her. She didn't believe I was single, lived alone, and without a house help. Yet my house had this great fragrance and was always clean. I had to reveal my secret. PJ's Acid Cleaner, my family's greatest gift. For bulk purchases. Please call 0244-624-526 or 0262-233-243. Abu's Abu's chapter. Hey, babe! Sister Paulina, we're reading glasses here, Chinya, we're reading Hebrew. Hey! Madam! Madam, when you see that it's a young hair back capsule, a drawing thing, a pair of water semi, we read the Amenche glasses. Hmm! Oh, bro, the best here. See, clear. Hey, you know, crew. It's a young hair back capsules. It's a full supplement for good vision and not recommended for children below 12 years, asthmatic patients, pregnant and breastfeeding mothers. Hey, bro, you baby, I'm trying to go to that it's a hair back show.
train you to be your own boss. We have international trainers who train you to fit in anywhere in the world. Um, we have our one-man training and we also have uh, two weeks. It's between two weeks to one month, depending on the individual. Whatever you want, we give it to you. At Chick Black Beauty Home, we give you quality yet affordable. So come and get trained and be your own boss. I'm a Jamaican. I was born in a little parish, a beautiful little parish called Clarendon, outside of Kingston. Everybody knows Kingston, but Clarendon is where I come from. I am a singer. I am an author. I am a, um, a songwriter. I am a poetess and, I'm a, and I am an actress, right? I do the whole, I've been doing it for many, many years. And so um, basically that's who I am. I'm uh, anything art, everything art. That's me. You think art and you think Diana. Yeah. <laughs> I do reggae music, I do inspirational music, I do cultural music, I do um, gospel, if you call it gospel. You know, I do. I just do uplifting, clean music, even the 12 year old can listen to it. Or, you know, or if the adult, if you feel like it needs some motivation or so. The kind of music I do will really, you know, motivate you. And that's basically what I do, reggae predominantly. Okay, so the inspiration behind Bed of Roses is this. Actually, you know, bad to bad, as we say in Jamaica, there's that little stigma that has always been going on that, you know, you know, men are, most men are not good men, and you don't really have good men, especially like if they're poor and they can't take care of you. Women have two hands and two feet too, so you know, crippled, you know, you don't necessarily need somebody to take care of you. What you need is a man with a good heart, who loves you and who will work to use it with you so you can build an empire. So, Bed of Roses is really in the defense of men and so also to really rewrite the narrative that if a man is poor, he can't take care of that he's not good. He's not good for you, which is a lie. You understand? So there are lots of men out there who don't have a lot of money, but they, you know, they are good and upright men. You know, they, they just want someone to work with them and someone to motivate them. And so that song was really, um, you know, to celebrate good men who don't necessarily have a lot of money. Nice to go ranch, don't go hoochie. Well, if I bet you where we plant, we not go hungry. Come and say, don't you hear me, we not we pantry. Give me a firm foundation, we not sunday. But of course, this is available to the public um, on our platform called 16 Bars Multimedia. So on the website, it will be that 16 B-A-R-S, M has in Mary, M has in Mary.com. So that is 16 Bars M-M.com. Definitely. I am available for live performances any day of the week. So you can contact me. Um, first of all, you can reach out to me on my Instagram as Empress Diana, and my Diana has two N's, so that's Empress, which is D I A N N A, so that's Empress Diana, that's my IG. And um, also, you can also, you know, send me a, a, a link or something on our YouTube. Our YouTube is the same name of our website, 16 Bars Multimedia. We have lots of um, work there. Uh, you can reach us there, and also you can um, you can reach us at 16 bars mm at outlook.com. So that is 16. This time it's the word. It's the, all spelled out. 16 bars mm at outlook.com. And if you choose when you go on our website, which is the same 16 bars mm dot com, um, you can go to the contact page and send us um, a, a message. And usually we respond within a couple of hours. All right. Um, so that's basically it. And I'm sure at the end of um, this, you you will have a number somewhere to contact us. All right. So that's that's it. That's what I do. And you know, keep 
the music laugh. <laughs> yes, I bless. Nice little ranch, don't go hurt you. Well, if I beg you where we plant, me not go hungry. Come and say, don't you hear me in our pantry? Give me a firm foundation. Sorry, sorry. Oh, look. Hey, so what? I want to know why you did. Who knows why she, she, she. I feel so dirty. Don't turn your mind. No, see the young woman, cuckoo, 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 cuckoo. So when you stomach was up, said the young heart burn, so I said be calm. I don't cry. The minimum said if you have a force in you, I don't know. Test results naturally say when you malaria when you move. Aye, three D. Yes, malaria. Nani yem no so we no here. Tina tet tomak and a tina tet malake. Fama no na no ho beto no. Tina tet malake and a tina tet tomak. I'm on my free. Tina tet malake. Eya ma ubi awenya malaria fever. Ena tina tet tomak mesha. Eya ma ubi awenya indigestion. Yen shi shemu mu sewenya malaria and sign a wafa edui. Not recommended for children below 12 years. Pregnant or lactating mothers should consult a doctor. Boa. Skip a judge. Blackboard. Koku show them. Power, oh, power, 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 African power, power, langa langa power. Democratic Republic of Congo, please stay in your country. Our women are not ready for you. Because if you come here, all of us will be out of business. Somebody like Jeff, this is 1.1. Lenche, lenche. 1.7 or Heneba 0.1 is people like me who can compete with the Congolese 11.2 at least this is the black pot aka Kukushunomo where we speak truth to power and my name Black Rasta we are live across the globe via Pan-African TV via satellite and when we fly we fly hard and rough Pushing away all turbulences and breaking the ice. We are champions. When it comes to Pan-Africanism on TV, pick our numbers. Talk to us. Let's do business with you. In the interim, dash away the epistles of Aisha Huang. Next thing I want to look at, watch, you know, man. What does it say? Ghana to the aid of UK's financial crisis. Hey, we think be this. Ghana? Ghana that is going to the IMF to come and help us with our financial crisis is going to help the UK. How? But who is this man? His face is familiar. Uh, the honor of a lifetime. UK's first black finance minister on his appointment. Oh, Kwesi. Kwesi, 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 Kwaten. Oh, I know Uncle Kwesi. He's one of us now. Oh, so he's uh, he's now the uh, finance minister of the UK. Finance minister. And this is the first time a black man has risen to that position. So people are jumping happy. Hey, black man don't do more, Especially that he's from Ghana. But who is this man? Should we be clapping? Should we be saying that we are happy? Come along. Let us dissect him into two. Come, watch who he is. Kwesi Kwatin was born in London Borough of Waltham Forest in 1975. It's good, it's in England. If it was in Ghana and you say forest, people will write that, oh, he is a wild animal or born in the jungle. But if you say forest in the UK, oh, they have a way of, you know, making it, you know, civilized. But forest in Africa, anywhere in Africa, will be primitive. Primitivized. Look at it. Kwesi Kwatin was born in the London borough of Welltown Forest in 1975. A year after I was born. The only child of Af Alfred K. Kwatin and Charlotte Bwite Kwatin, who had immigrated from Ghana as students in the 1960s. His mother is a barrister and his father an economist 
in the Commonwealth Secretariat. After starting school at a state primary school, Quartin attended Kole or Colette. This is Colette Court in an independent preparatory school uh, in London where he won the Harrow History Prize in 1988. Quartin then went to Eton College, blah, 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 boom, 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 boom. He had a PhD. He went to where, 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 BBC did what, 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 what. That is a great man, academically he's achieved. But that is this man. The honor of a lifetime UK's first black finance minister. And when you read, it says, the United Kingdom's new chancellor of S. A checker, uh, Kwesi Kwatin, has uh, reacted to his appointment by incoming Prime Minister Liz Truss. Read. The British-born politician of Ghanaian descent became the first black person to occupy the office and he effectively becomes the second most powerful political figure in the UK. Kwesi Kwatin, 47, until his new appointment was the business and energy minister. He uh, rallied behind trust in the lead up to the UK prime minister race after Boris Johnson announced that he was leaving his post last month. Kwatin and trust uh, are reportedly very close and they have been friends for more than a decade. They entered parliament the same year and also live in the same neighborhood, according to some reports. Dash it away. So you see, they live together. He's a man of high integrity. He lives in a top class area in the UK by virtue of his position and his achievements. So he probably has cut off links with the suffering black masses. Maybe. But what does he think? about black people does he see himself as black these are the questions i'm asking now when you go further he actually says that black lives matter is a cartoon character of a movement black lives matter is a cartoon character of a movement. You know Black Lives Matter? When George Floyd was shot and killed in America for no reason, and black people came out demonstrating, they started a movement called Black Lives Matter, BLM, to tell people that, listen, black people, our lives matter too. White people even joined. They even went ahead to pull down statues. When our countryman, we see Kurantin, mother Ghanaian, father Ghanaian, who went all the way to England in the 1960s and better him in 1975. He called that movement a cartoon character movement. And he said that the people who are part of it need to understand history. British history of colonialism, slavery, and so on and so forth. Remember that this is a man who has won a prize or maybe several prizes in history. So he's saying that those who belong to that moment, movement must go and learn history. But it is a cartoon character of a movement. This is a black man. Hmm? Is he a black man? You know how, what, where I stand? When black people are achieving things, we are the most downtrodden people. You see Black Rasta on the forefront pushing. But people like this man, I'm a little bit more careful coming out to celebrate. My brother, my sister, this was a clean, strong supporter of Brexit. Break away from the rest of Europe so that Britain can take back its glory. In quotes. Today, because he's Ghanaian, Kwesi Kwatin, he doesn't have a British name. Yeah, that's okay. Some Ghanaian would have said, oh, his name is Johnson Milton Badderson. Kwesi Kwatin is gone. Put aside the name and the Ghanaian label slapped on him. How many times have we seen him in Ghana? If I say how many times have we seen him in Ghana, what has he done in his own way? to push the country of its origin. 
These are people who see themselves as British. They are not Ghanaian. They do not want to have anything to do with Ghana. After all, they are British. I'm not saying exactly that is what he is. But his comment about the Black Lives Matter thing put me off totally. My brother, congratulations. But for now, I see you as British. And I understand that. You are better than the people who have dual citizenships. At least you have pushed away your country of birth. Better still, a country of origin. Your country of birth is England. So everything should be British. You understand? That's okay. But the hypocrites who have dual citizenships, they are British Ghanaians. Like somebody I'm going to talk about in the next chapter. They are those we are looking at. Some of them allegedly are hiding their British passports and interfering in Ghanaian activities because they speak one or two Ghanaian languages and we know their fathers are Ghanaians or were Ghanaians. Kwesi Kwaten, congratulations, but I will reserve my jubilation for the right time. Dash it away. Come along. I'm about to go. And last thing I'm going to look at before I go is here. Build Trump's wall in Ghana. Gabi teases. Pseudo Prime Minister of the Republic of Ghana is this man. He's alleged to have a British passport. His parents were in the UK. Family UK. Something like that. So, people say that he has a British passport. This is Trump's wall. They want a wall like this. In fact, a wall. Trump said he was going to build a wall to cut away Mexican rapists and thieves and drug addicts from entering his country, America. He warned before the elections. And when he became president, he decided to move that agenda. And when he was asked who was going to pay for that wall, you know what he said? Mexico will pay for that wall. Hey, what show of power. Play of power. Power play. Today, what is Gabi saying? Watch this. Illegal black immigrants sneak in, even in the UK. Gabi defends Aisha Huang's return. This is Ghana Web. Oh, even in England it happens. And if England is what it is, then you see the mediocre minds. Pseudo prime minister. These are the people who are ruling you. He allegedly has a British passport. So for all they care, this country can crash and sink like the Titanic. They will go back to England. But you and I, read the story. Responding to public concerns about the failure of the state to stop her re-entry into the country, Gabi in a Facebook post noted that such incidents are not limited to Ghana alone. According to him, the arrest of Aisha Huang after her re-entry rather proves the existence of a working system in the country. Listen. He, however, urged those unhappy with the current situation. Listen, oh, those who are not happy with the current situation should vote for a party that will promise to build a wall across the country's borders. What, what kind of a joke is that? Hmm? This is tomfoolery. This is what he says. Vote for a party that will build a wall like Trump's wall so that ants cannot even come in. After all, in Britain, people sneak in. So it is okay if people sneak into this country. Hey, Gabby, you are an idiot. I've never used this word on you. But you are an idiot. You know why? When Britain deports you, Britain makes sure that even your shadow does not come near its bodies. They have systems that can pick intelligence. The list will be your fingerprints. They make sure that your shadow doesn't even cross anywhere. We deported this woman. 
She was arrested three, four times before and freed. Gangsterly woman. Spy. We put her back on a flight. Sent her with your party in power. Did that. Your president came and said it was a mistake. Now she's in the country. And the best you can say is it happens in England too. And that you can build a Trump wall. You see? Now I'm convinced that you truly have a British passport. You don't care about Ghanaians. I will not listen to you again. You don't mean well for Ghana. Are you Ghanaian? Well, we have Ghanaians who are un-Ghanaian. After all, they have a British passport or an American passport. People don't like it when I say dual citizenship is demonic. But I say it time and again. We can agree to disagree. But Gabi, this is the lowest comment you can ever make. You need to redeem yourself. And if you were misquoted in this, that's what it is. My name is Black Rasta. I want to thank you so much for coming on the show. I appreciate you. I love you. It's been the Blackport, a.k.a. Kukushunomo, where we speak truth to power. Hey! Wayo! Power! Power! <laughs>